Are you just starting Rise of Kingdoms and wondering what civilization you should be picking? Or have you been playing for a little while and thinking of making a switch? Worry not, I've got you covered. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay video from your very own Shappy Gaming. If this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. Don't be, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right over there, bottom right hand corner. And if I haven't earned it yet, then stick around, hopefully I will. Rise of Kingdoms is an awesome game on mobile. It has its pros, it has its cons, but the first decision that you need to make as soon as you start playing Rise of Kingdoms is which civilization to pick. And this is one of the largest decisions that you can be making in Rise of Kingdoms. Today we're going to be walking through all of the different civilizations that you can pick in Rise of Kingdoms and talking about which ones you probably should pick and what the best civilization in Rise of Kingdoms is. Please note, it will vary depending upon what troop type that you want. And when you're first studying Rise of Kingdoms, this can be a lot. You have no idea what matters to you. So my goal is to try and make it as easy and as accessible as possible. So with that, we're going to start with the first civilization that's available on the far left. Uh, you can't see it because my face is blocking it, but that civilization is Egypt. The thing to know whenever you pick your very first civilization is that you're actually going to get a commander for free that is relevant to that specific civilization. So all of these different civilizations have a commander that's relevant to them. And I will try to tell you, don't pick based on which commander looks coolest because these commanders do have ramifications later on in the game. If you have been playing before, then this is no, no news to you. But you still might be wondering which civilization is best for me and how can I do better in terms of unit types. So we'll focus on that as well. If you're new to Rise of Kingdoms, there are four different units. Archers, Infantry, Cavalry, and Siege. Siege, kind of irrelevant for all intents and purposes here, but you can see that each civilization does have a special unit specific to them, and most of the time, their buffs will actually be relevant to that specific unit. All of these units do have different advantages compared to the standard unit. I will point out, you don't get these special advantages until I believe it's T4, uh, which is yeah, kind of far into the game. If you are curious what the breakdown is, I will have a guide in my Discord, so be sure to check that out in the uh, description of the video. And you can go into guides and you can see the differences between all the different units. However, Egypt is an archer civilization, and the buffs of this is archers attack by 5%, Rallied army damage dealt by 5%, and building and research speed by 1.5%. If you're new to Rise of Kingdoms, then building and research speed is still going to be really relevant to you. And if you're a spender, which you may or may not decide coming into the game, then the rallied army damage is going to be really valuable because those that spend the most money tend to also be the rally leaders. The disadvantage of this is it's only archer attack. And if you guys have watched any of my videos before, then you know that we really do want to focus on troop health uh, and defense rather than attack. Attack is kind of the least valuable of the three. So that is Egypt, and Imhotep is a archer-specific commander. He's actually really good for archers. So if you do want to pick an archer civilization, Egypt is not a bad way to go. But let's see what some of the other civilization options are. It is worth pointing out that the easiest free-to-play civilization is going to be infantry. Uh, and so just keep that in mind as you're starting out. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, uh, I would highly, highly recommend that you pick an infantry civilization or at least an infantry-specific commander. And I do have a favorite in mind. The next civilization that we're going to be covering is Rome. So for Rome, you get Scipio Africanus, who is an epic commander, and he's pretty good. Rome is not a bad starting civilization. You'll see that you get infantry defense of 5%, troop march speed of 5%, and food gathering speed of 10%. This will not really help you earlier on in the game because you're not getting any building or research or training speed buffs. All you're getting is really food gathering speed and troop march speed. Troop march speed is helpful if you're running infantry because it makes it easier to escape enemies, but ideally when you're starting out, you don't want to be getting in too many fights. Additionally, Scipio, unfortunately, is not an infantry type commander. He is a um, leadership commander, which means that he excels with multiple troops within 
his march, which is not really uh, effective late in the game. So we've kind of ruled out Rome. Let's take a look at Germany. So Germany is an awesome starting civilization for two reasons. As you can see, you get an in increase to cavalry attack of 5%, and you get the special unit of, tu of Teutonic Knights. Teutonic Knights do have a higher defense than most other cavalries, which is nice. Uh, and the troop training speed is really helpful late into the game. So you could pick Germany and use it for a long time. The action point recovery is also really valuable because in Rise of Kingdoms, you benefit from using your AP or action points uh, really, really quickly early on in the game. So if you can recover quickly, then you can play more throughout the day, kill more barbarians. And that's going to help you grow quickly to begin with. You do get Herman here, who is a really strong archer starting commander. So unfortunately, you do get kind of a, a divide because you're getting an archer starting commander, but you're getting a uh, cavalry troop attack buff. Not a great situation, but the Civ buffs are phenomenal. And that's why maybe you should consider switching to Germany later on. I will point out at this point in the video, you do get the opportunity to switch civilizations. I believe it's at level eight of your, of your city hall. And so you can pick a civilization to start out as and to get your epic commander for and then switch later on. And I highly recommend you do that. So there's Germany. Germany is overall a really good civilization for cavalry and one that you sh probably should be considering. The next civilization we're gonna be covering is Britain. Britain, you start as Boudicca. Uh, and Boudicca is a integrations commander, uh, so she's not terribly viable and she isn't unit type specific, which is not great. You do get longbowmen, which are fairly good, uh, but again, probably not the best civilization for you. Again, here you do get troop training speed of 5%, which is going to help you grow really quickly and it's gonna be a beneficial buff late into the game. Uh, and you do get the ally garrison capacity increase of 20%. That's not going to make a huge difference really ever in the game. So I would skip Britain if I were you. Next, we move on to France. France is one of my favorite civilizations for long-term playing in the game, as well as if you're creating a farm account. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Your starting commander here, you get Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc is a fairly good commander. She is really geared towards support and she pairs well with Scipio, um, but she's also really great for gathering, which is gonna be super important earlier on in the game. You can see that with France, you get a troop health buff of 3%, which again, as you heard me mention earlier, troop health is really going to be what you want. Wood gathering speed, which is kind of whatever, and hospital healing speed of 20%. France is incredibly infantry based as a civilization. Infantry use wood and you have the special unit of throwing axemen. Throwing axemen have a higher infantry health than other infantry units. So this is really good to keep in mind, and France is definitely a civilization I would recommend for you if you are planning on staying infantry late into the game. The next civilization, oh my goodness, the Vikings. How many ads have you seen for the Vikings in Rise of Kingdoms? Let me know in the comment section below. The starting commander that you get with Vikings is Bjorn Ironside. Bjorn is an infantry type commander, which is good because you're also getting an infantry buff as playing the Vikings. So I will point out to you that these buffs don't make a terribly large difference and you can switch civs based on buffs. Um, but the ads saying, oh, well, I play as the Vikings, so I get to do this, meh, doesn't really make all that much of a difference. You also get a counterattack damage buff of 3% and troop load of 10%. This is really helpful for a couple reasons. Counterattack damage buff is going to make it so when you do get swarmed, which means when multiple marches are attacking you, you're actually going to deal more damage to them without actually targeting them. And the troop load is helpful because early on in the game, you do want to gather and gathering is essential to this game. So if you are planning on being you know, low spender and you do want to gather, Vikings are not a bad civilization for you. However, if you do want to be infantry, I do think there is a better setup for you. The next civilization we are going to cover is China. And with China, you get the starting commander of Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is probably the best starting commander that you can get in Rise of Kingdoms. The reason for this is that he deals a ton of skill damage and he is infantry specialty. And as you can see here, you're getting troop defense of 3%. This spans to all of your different troop types and early on, you may not have one specific march. 
You also get that action point recovery, which we talked about earlier with Germany as being great, and you get a building speed buff of 5%. The special unit type here is an archer, but again, keep in mind, you're probably going to be switching civilizations before you even unlock the special unit type. So my personal recommendation, if you want to start Rise of Kingdom strong, is pick China. China is probably going to be the best for you early on, especially if you think that you might want to play as an infantry player. I would say pick China and switch to France. Those, that is my recommendation for infantry if you're new, if you're old, either way. If you want to play as archers, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. The next civilization that we're going to be talking about is Japan. Japan is a civilization I would absolutely recommend you do not start as. Uh, Japan is not terribly viable early into the game or late into the game. You do get Kusunoki, who is an archer-specific commander, uh, but he's not terribly good early on. Uh, and he's not terribly good later on either. And as you can see, the special unit type is a samurai, which has high attack but low defense. So if you do get swarmed, it's gonna hurt. Uh, and you do get a troop attack buff uh, of 3%, but as we spoke about earlier, attack is going to be a little bit less valuable than health and defense. Scout march speed is completely irrelevant to you, and resource gathering speed buff of 5% is helpful when you're getting started, but not terribly good in general. The next civilization we're going to be talking about is Korea. Korea is a really interesting civilization. The starting commander you get here is Yulji Mondiak, and I hope I didn't butcher the name too bad, uh, and he is an infantry commander. He is a very strong infantry commander, although I would say slightly less uh, usable than Sun Tzu. The buffs here you get are archer defense of 5%, hospital capacity of 15%, and research speed of 3%. All of these buffs are fairly good. I will say, if you think that you want to be an archer player long term, this is a really viable civ for you. And the reason for that is the archer defense is useful, and the hospital capacity increase of 15% is going to make it so that you can have more units in your hospital, which obviously makes sense. But if you're new to the game, that's super helpful, especially if you're getting swarmed or you have a bunch of marches out in the field that happen to get killed. This is helpful. And research is going to be especially viable for you as you're trying to level up early in Rise of Kingdoms. The next civilization we're going to be covering is Spain. Spain is probably not the civilization that you want to pick. I think if we're talking tiers, Spain and Japan would be close to the bottom. You do get Pelagius, who is a fairly strong cavalry commander. Uh, and as you can see, you do get a cavalry defense buff of 5%. But unfortunately, you get experience gained from barbarians and other neutral of 10%, which is ter not terribly useful and resource production of 20%, which is probably the worst buff in the game. So if I were you, I'd probably skip Spain. The next civilization that we're going to be talking about is Arabia. And Arabia is actually pretty good late into the game because of this final skill here. You also get the Mamluks, which are a really good special cavalry unit. So Arabia is not a bad one to consider starting out with. Baybars has an AOE attack, which means you're attacking three to five targets at once, which is really strong early on in the game. And if you haven't checked out my Epic Commander Guide, Baybars is one of the ones that I recommend extraordinarily highly. The buffs here are Cavalry Attack of 5%, Damage Dealt to Barbarians and Other Neutral Units by 10%, and Damage Dealt by Rallied Armies by 5%. As you heard me mention earlier, if you are going to be launching rallies, especially if you're gonna be launching Cavalry Rallies, Arabia is really not a bad option for you. But for starting, you know, it, it depends upon how much you intend to spend. Again, you probably won't be leading too many rallies unless you are a spender. The next option we have here is the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire is great as an archer civilization. This is long-term, in my opinion, the best archer civilization that you can run. If you're an archer primary, this is what you should be using, and this is what you should switch to. This is the best archer civilization in the game. That said, if you are starting out in Rise of Kingdoms, you will get Osman as your starting commander. Osman is not going to be a terribly strong starting commander for you, and you're probably never going to really use him. So although you get you know, the archer health of 5%, troop march speed of 5%, and active skill damage of 5%, the starting commander is not going to be good for you. So the second, after you switch your civilization, you're gonna to wanna to switch to Ottoman, especially if you're an archer primary. The next civilization, which is one of the ones that I highly recommend, is Byzantium. Byzantium is the best 
cavalry starting civilization in the game. And the reason for that is you get Belisarius, who is probably the one of the best early uh, commanders in the game. Belisarius excels at, at leading cavalry and is great at hit and run tactics. So if you're a low spender or you're free to play, you're going to want to start with Byzantium. Byzantium also has cavalry health buff of 5%, and as we mentioned earlier, 5% of health is way more impactful than attack or defense. You get stone gathering speed, which makes sense because cavalry needs stone in order to train and heal, and you get a hospital ca capacity buff of 15%, which we already discussed as being extraordinarily useful. So, to answer the original question of which civilization is best to start out with in Rise of Kingdoms, my suggestion is really going to be China, mainly because infantry are the easiest to work with as we talk about free-to-play and low spenders in Rise of Kingdoms. However, if you would like to start as cavalry, I recommend that you do pick Byzantium as your civilization, because Byzantium is going to be especially useful really late into the game. You might not get the buffs of the research or anything like that, but you do get Belisarius really early. So I would absolutely consider using Byzantium as your cavalry civilization. Now, if you want to play as archers early on in Rise of Kingdoms, the civilization that I would actually recommend you use is going to be Egypt. And the reason for that is Imhotep is a really, really viable archer commander early on into the game. And you do get the archer attack buff and the building and research speed buff of 1.5%. So you're getting a lot of buffs really early on in the game. Now, as we talk about switching civilizations, here's what I would recommend. If you started as infantry or you think you want to use infantry long term, I recommend that you actually switch to the France civilization. And the reason for this is you get the throwing axemen, which do have a higher health than most other units, and you get a troop health buff of 3%, which is the equivalent of 5% attack or defense. The wood gathering speed is fine, but the hospital healing speed is going to make your life really easy once you start getting further into the game. This is an exemplary buff that you don't see very many other places in the game. Now, if you do want to be archers long term in the game, then as I mentioned, you probably should be switching to the Ottoman Empire, which is by far the best archer civilization in Rise of Kingdoms. Feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below. If you're going to be cavalry, I think you do have an easy advantage here because you can stick with Byzantium. If you choose not to, to stick with Byzantium as a cavalry player, you can switch to Germany, mainly for the troop training buff and the action point recovery. But I would not start with Germany if I were you. I hope that this has been insightful. This is my best civilization guide for Rise of Kingdoms. If you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button right over there, bottom right-hand corner, and hit the bell so you get notified when new episodes come out. Thank you. Shappy out.